Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer 1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Railway Empire with the German DLC. I'm playing along with my good friend, the new IKB. Say hi, IKB. Hi, everyone. And he's going to be advising me, answering questions, um, and generally um, giving us good information, hopefully. Now, we have a few questions from the last... Um, uh, Video put Emma? up there. Emma, I can't hear you. You can't hear me again, and it's I. Yeah, now you can hear me because I'm seeing where my microphone. I don't know why it's going off there. Okay, you can hear me now, right? Yes. Okay, so we have a few questions from the last video posted by Jeff. Um, it's sort of a multi-part question, um, and so I'm going to read it to you, and then you can respond as best you know. How did track sig signaling actually work in the 1850s? Not necessarily in Germany, but just generally speaking. Um, did they have men stationed at them? Did rail companies have master control rooms with a wall showing track and current or estimated train locations? Was there a telegraph type setup? So I don't know how best you can answer that, but it is an interesting well, question. Uh, best I can do, unfortunately, I haven't got immediate access to all my reference books at the moment. But no best, problem. Best from memory is that a lot of the early stuff, a lot of the early, sort of early stuff around this time was a lot of stuff done with essentially men with sort of having a man almost at each individual signal. Okay. And as things sort of progressed a bit, I started to. Sort of centralized down to having for each sort of section of track, you'd have a signal box that looked after it, which would have you know, would be the sort of the big frame you see in all the um photos where they've got all the big levers that they're pulling, right? And those are all connected to cables and um essentially metal rod linkages that go out to the points and the signals, okay? And they do have a telegraph system that works on not Morse code, but sort of a, a railway version of Morse code that right. they use to talk to the next single box down the line and send simple messages through you. So many um, things at the bell is to ask, you know, is there a train coming into my section and other things like that. And there's also, they also had started to just about, around this time I think started to get indicator machines that would be able to tell you whether the line was um, occupied or not okay from I think just sort of about this time they're just you know we're you know, almost starting to look into getting things track circuited up but that was sort of about the stage of things were sort of okay around the 1850s it hadn't got had hadn't gotten anywhere near as complicated as it eventually has now right and there were a lot of um there were a lot of cases where especially some of the earlier railways were sort of running almost on essentially time delay so rather than knowing exactly where no rather than knowing that the line ahead is clear they sort of worked on well it's been so long since we left let the last train go it's probably gone far enough we can let the next one go right but then that, after a few too many accidents of trains running in the back of each other, they stopped doing that. Right. But I do know, like in the United States, our time zone system was set up specifically because of the railways. They, um, everybody was like, well, figure out where, you know, noon was is the sun, you know, immediately above, above you kind of thing. And doing it you know more than just like looking at the sky but um figuring out that and then set you know that's noon and then setting that up well even within all of that different towns would have different official times so it was um for scheduling purposes along these lines and um they coordinate it between rail companies between within rail systems towns is they set up our time zones to be able to more efficiently coordinate rails because I am sure we can't 
because map isn't global, um, in the east coast of the U.S. around some of the great cities, it was as dense raily as anywhere in Britain, you know, around greater New York or Boston area or wherever, until a lot of little little railway railway lines to, to small towns and all interconnecting. But then you get out into, you know, the central part of America, into the American West, you had to have like one train or two trains coming through in a day in a particular direction. So you know that, well, you know, once the noon train passes, you know that there's another train. And so sort of like you're saying, you can easily have these multiple hours spread apart, but if you have the time set. So there was that kind of thing. So railways have influenced us significantly culturally because of um, trying to um, keep the accidents from happening. Now, where I'm seeing something here that's going to become an issue. So what we're going to do here, no, 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 let's cancel that. Let's come here, create, now, yeah, there, and here, because what we're going to do here is, um, we'll do that, and then, We'll do this, and then we'll come here and do this to that. And as soon as, okay, let's let this train go by. And we're going to take out that signal and create another signal here out a little bit further with the information of which way to go on their line now this way lines because when i originally put this in it was just simply to feed the warehouse but we are going to head to connect here and as ikb suggested last time we should instead of trying to make it around this mountain which we could you know cut through here is just simply um see about buying access to here which is eight hundred thousand. So I think we're going to see if we can wait on this, because then we can get up to Essen and uh, Gunther Schlow, or whatever. Again, sorry for my butchering of towns and names I've never heard of. Not that I'm going to play the, um, the particular... Um, uh, mission for it, but there's one one mission dealing with the development of the American West, and they have a town on it called Brody, and I know the town called Brody, and you, you build railways there. There, to the best of my knowledge, is no railway to to Brody, because Brody is a true, and it's still there, an American ghost town. There is, you know, old wooden building from, I don't know, the 1870s or the 1880s, and they are just left there abandoned, and it's become sort of a um, you know, protected historical site now, but originally it was just because the trains never went there and bypassed it, that whatever the reason for the original building of it um, disappeared, so. Just sort of interesting little tidbit on how, also how the railways are affecting life. We have until 53 March to get that bonus, and that's what I want to do. And our current task, we have till 54 to get two businesses, which also just simply means saving up money, basically. So that means we're in good shape here. So we're going to speed this up. Okay, King's Cross Railway Station is opened. I've been there, and of course, I'm sure IKB has, but um, in London, so that's happened. Uh, King's Cross, famous for uh, the Harry Potter films. Oh, that's right. Yes, um, I have seen yeah, a couple of those. Nine and three quarters. Right, so that gives everybody um, a frame of reference. I'm sure many people have seen that. And thanks for following the channel. I do appreciate it. Okay. Um, well, this would give us uh, another building, but where is this? Okay. 
Hmm, way down here. Mm, no, I don't think I want to buy this. I'm saving up the money for the other thing, and so, no. But we can come here, and I would much prefer to control. Which, of course, would delay. Okay, what are our options? Bakery. We'll tailor and distilleries if we wait long enough to get the money for it. Food industry or um, smokehouse, which is already... No, which isn't there. No, we can't do that yet. That's what it's, it's a little um, question mark thing. Okay. Brewery. Do we have a brewery in operation around here? And it requires hops. Do we have a hops location? We have a... Um, I forget what this is up here. Well, this is food industry. That's right. Um, we still need salt for that. Oh, we have hops down here. So I think we're going to get this, and we're going to go with a brewery. Um, we'll put it up over here. In the kingdom of Prussia, that Bismarck has entered the political stage. A tough cookie, if you ask me. Okay, so that's moving us forward. Bismarck is is doing his machinations. Now, well, that basically took all of our money, so we're going to... So, you're friends with this man, Henschel, a Democrat of the worst character. Be warned that I will keep my eyes on you and your activities. Okay, I'm going to also turn up the audio on this a little bit. What we need to do is connect, and I think we can. It's a, no, it isn't. Yeah, yeah, it's in Arizona, of course. We need to connect to this as soon as we. Okay, well, we're getting some money there. Okay, so. And I like that it just showed me, yeah, I was thinking of going straight to here, but we got a mountain in the way, so we're going to want to come. Hmm, let's look. Yeah, we might want to eventually also. Nah. We're going to wait a little bit. Break down bad condition. Pretty sure we got maintenance buildings. Okay, now there's plenty of money. That's good. What I think I want to do here is... I'm trying to be a little creative here. Okay, come out this way. No, 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 no. Well, since you're sort of forcing that. Now. Double this up. Uh, 
There we go. Now, let's get the signals. There we go. So, and we will want to come from here. I think that's what we want to do. Look at the path. Yeah, they'll go up and around. Okay, and let's don't enter here unless it's clear. Don't enter unless it's clear. And I guess, well, here. That way, because these are fairly short, might get some trains stuck. So, um, set up a railway from here to here so they can get their hops. We want them to go with a relatively full. Well, and yeah, we'll take that track. Okay. And we'll add in a, um, yeah, I'm liking the wave early here. Decent price. We'll stick a security guard on that, I guess. Protect the hops. <laughs> Let's slow this back up. Okay. Um, now what I also want to do here is... Do that. Parallel this. come that way and don't go there unless it's clear so now we can well is anybody needing milk yet I know we're gonna need to do that at some point we want to grow these but um, not yet 60,000 citizens that may have been a little premature for some of these now we don't want the sausage maker this is the town yeah, 60, what's their current population? 45. Okay, so that was a little early, so we probably don't need to run that train yet. Oh well. But we need the hops for there. And yeah, we spent too much money. No more spending money on anything, but we can do some research. Okay. Um, hmm. Newspaper ads, number of passengers. Train museums help with getting rid of locomotives. The Rhine lack. Okay, speed, fast, mix, suitability. So we're mostly using Waverly. That would only be a little more faster. And I don't know that I want to spend money on upgrading my trains yet. Um, but we got that. That's helping our innovation. I think we're going to do these two here. Newspaper ads and telegraph. Now, of course, my opinion, um, the most unrealistic thing here, is the sort of insta-track lays. Because although you can theoretically have people working all along the track all at once, in a really an alignment situation, you sort of have to, to, you know, coordinate that. So that's the most, in my opinion, unrealistic element.
So I was thinking about this for a World War II simulation. And if you could just instantly, no matter whatever the cost is, just instantly drop down track, that would be a little, little fast. Um, nope, we're not spending any money on anything. We want to try to get to 800,000 plus whatever to get into this zone here. Oh, and we'd also need to build that. Mm, well, I don't know if we're going to get to this bonus. But I don't know that I want to do a screwy setup either. Well, mm, that's ah, just a little tough. Well, I think we're going to miss that. Oh, well. That's March 3rd or something. Yeah. Okay, patriotic bit. See you later. Make sure there's a similar sort of orientation. There we go. You can see the problems here some degree from trying to build which we don't see so much from the top okay yeah that's gone away but now which is still a good idea is we want to expand into this region Okay, so now we can do that. Probably going to have to wait for a little more money to get here. But Okay, so we have a mountain range here. Coming through this valley, which was some of my ideas, is still looking pretty good. But we want to also come up to... Here, so probably have to come around this way, this valley here, when we're ready. Don't know if there's much train robbery in Germany. Not that I would expect you to know, but was there train robbery in Europe, generally speaking, um, IKB? Um, not really. Like, like with a gun. There I'm not talking few... somebody just like you know quietly stealing something with nobody noticing, but like with a gun or you know some sort of armed robbery of some sort. Um, not. Right. It wasn't enough of a a regular occurrence to put you know, security guards on sort of you know every train right but there's been particularly in the uk we've had a couple of you know, great train robberies supposedly where things like um so well, i've seen the movie called great train robberies yeah things like where they've got shipments of banknotes or right. large shipments of gold being transported right there have been a few times where people have decided to try and rob those and have sometimes succeeded right but it's normally um it's normally when that happens when that's happened in the past in at least particularly in britain it's been you know 
looked at more as being someone's pulled a heist on a tr on a train rather than you know a gang of thugs stopping a train and holding it up at gun gunpoint. It's been more of the sort of the heist approach really rather than the right. So I have seen the Sean Connery movie, and then I do know that what I don't know back in the '60s or '70s, there was a big um, train heist, and the guys get to Spain or something like like you say, but more sort of done covertly kind of thing, trying to do it. But yeah, I believe the one in the I think it was in the I think it was I mean, it was right around the end of Steam, I think. So probably been in the late sixties, early seventies in the UK. Right. They actually, um, because it had gone over to coloured light electronic signals at the time, they used a, I think it was a car battery to make the signal light up red to stop the train that way. So they, oh, they, okay. they went for the, um, they did it by sort of substitute substitutes and trickery, right. rather than the stick a giant bolt on the tracks and hold everyone up at gunpoint method. Yeah. Hey, I see Arno is asking, um, in the time period gamer is playing, who was more advanced in train tech, Europe or the US? I've got to say definitely Europe, mainly because there was a lot more sort of, um, there was a lot more sort of immediate heavy industry immediately available to capitalize on, okay, we can start pumping out locomotives and vast quantities of properly made you know rolled iron and steel rails in the insane quantities you need very good not i yeah um i'm obviously not going to disagree with that um as when i was doing some of my reading for the um so my research for your um american civil war series right. i did find out that some of the american railways at that time instead of having proper metal rails they actually had wooden rails with then essentially metal tops wrapped around and strapped onto them oh okay that's i didn't know that at all that's interesting there's sort of a you know, a cost saving measure because they were trying to do things on the cheap yeah yeah mm. no there's um there were a lot of controversies, and I'm only just vaguely aware of them, um, before and after the American Civil War dealing with passenger safety issues. And um, because of both the, the great scale of it and the sort of race to get their first competition between multiple companies that, and the total lack of any regulation, you know, that existed back then, that things were... Um, very sort of wild and not well done. Okay, I'm sort of trying to plot out my path to getting up to here. And the, um, I like this view. That's the, where's, um, Essen is up over here somewhere. Um, over there, okay, so. We wanna do this. I think that's the path we want to be at. Um, how much was signal just to get that out of the way? We have 20,000. Um, yeah, a bit longer. We have space for that. So. Okay, we're going to do that. Then we're going to come down here. Let's. straight out there so we can do the points nice gentle curve to here hmm. tunnel look at how expensive that tunnel is Ooh, 150 so that yeah little so see if you can get the um see if you can try and turn it from a tunnel into just like a very deep rock cut yeah or very deep cutting that'll yeah. be a much much cheaper option yeah, I think you're right about that. Okay, um, no. Oh, no, I don't think we can. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, hold it. Let's, let's scrap this and start over. Uh, 
Okay, well, see, so we look at the bridge, bridging cost to get that. Okay, let's see. Keep bridging, yeah, 30. Hmm. Okay, 17%. That 15 that would be really, really steep. I'm sure it would, but it seems to... It'll slow things up. But unless we're going to go full-on tunnel. We're looking at... Well, we got it down to 14% grade, and that's going to be steep. But I think that is going to be our... Okay, and well... Hmm, let's stop that. I think we're going to bypass that for now. Come around. This is... Okay, so we've got to give it enough space for... Oh, bridging here. Bridging is expensive. Okay, well... Uh, it looks like we're far enough out. Okay, well, that's going to be expensive. See if we can reduce the cost by reducing that height. Um, Shift. No. I think we're gonna have to tunnel. I think we're gonna have to wait. Yeah, we're just gonna do it. So trash that. Okay, so we gotta wait a little bit, and we'll earn up. Random breakdown. Okay, well, random breakdowns are just random breakdowns. It's not lack of maintenance. Okay, now I think we probably have enough money. Let's let's see about this again. Let's try for this one here. Straight out for a little while. Nice gentle curve there. We just plow through this here. Ooh, 200. Okay, we'll do a ride along soon. It's a nice idea. Okay, yeah, let's come around. Okay, so we have enough for one-way direction on that. We'll do a ride along through the tunnel once we can. Okay. Now, we'll have enough, but we'll at least get this mapped out. Okay, so as soon as we can, we need... It's a lot less because you only have to do one tunnel. See that all taken off? Oh, yeah, parallel tracks, because the, otherwise the tunnel... We still have a little bit of tunneling there, but not as nearly as much. Okay. 
no suitable freight, express line is in danger of losing faster locomotive. Um, do we have a, yeah, let's go with that. We'll spend that and let's look, do we have any other express lines here? Um, look to the top. Oh, this guy new. Oh, well, that's just a new rail. Whatever, whenever we choose, whatever that's going to be. That's the one that we just changed, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. We don't want to train. Um. Yeah. That. That's your only current express line. Okay. You got the fastest train. Keep going. I want to see what it's like going through the tunnel. I haven't done that yet. That's why we're going to sort of wait for it and just do that once we get the enough money, which will be soon. We'll take the castle to Gunther Schlau. And yeah, we'll take the engineer, conductor, and conductor, but not the promoter or the auctioneer. Okay, and let's find. Um, don't forget to add a water tower somewhere on the new line. Yeah, we will. And I'll forget. No, hopefully it won't, but... Um, can we do it yet? Yeah. Okay, good. So we can get that. Um, this end we will need a crossing point. Okay, and now for towers to tell it what direction... Um, So you go in that direction. You don't need a crossing point because that's a station with signaling. And we want to put the water tower somewhere relatively flat. So I think we're going to make it over here towards the end of it instead of the middle because that's on the hills. Because it'll try to pick up speed after going uphill will be a lot. Um, and back to the new there to there um, yeah that's it and let's add a we don't have enough money we'll wait a moment now we have enough money okay and let's throw on one of our new engineer and one of our new conductors it will help us get more passengers and we're gonna um, we're gonna slow that down, and we're gonna come here and go for a ride along. Heading to Kessel. Hesse Kessel is where the um, Hessian uh, mercenaries are from. They're famous in America, um, the mercenaries that there were other than Hessians as well, other German um, mercenaries um, hired out to the British, but the Hessians are the famous ones. The great bulk of them were captured by um, Washington after he crosses the Delaware River. Very famously, there's a very good movie. Um, Schwabisch Bahn at full steam, whatever rail, full steam, okay. Um, crossing that and getting, uh, capturing them with no American losses of life and very little Hessian losses of life. But also, the Hessians were um, used as mercenaries. Uh, this is cool. Oh, light comes on. Cool. We got center support beams. Oh, this is cool. Glad we're doing this. Okay. Coming through. First time on a train ride through a tunnel in this game for me. Um, were also um, used in 1745-46 in the Jacobite Risings. Um, 
they hired a bunch, um, about the same number, about um, five, 6,000 Hessians to come over and um, beat up on the Scots, shoot them and that kind of thing. Um, and to the Hessians' credit, the um, general, um, after they get to Scotland, goes, um, yeah, uh, are these, um, enemy soldiers that we're fighting or, um, you know, rebels that are without, um, you know, protection? Oh, no, they're, they're, they're rebels. We're, you know, so the Hessian, um, the, the general in charge, the prince that's commanding him, I forget who he was at the time, um, uh, we're not going to take the train back, but one way was cool. Um, basically says, yeah, unless you give them proper military status, we're not going to fight them. So they ended up just being garrison troops um, in Scotland for a while. But because, because of that, not willing to treat the Jacobites as rebels, but just as enemy soldiers under the laws of war, meaning they would be willing to surrender under the, you know, Laws of war and that kind of thing. So that's what sort of Hesse, Kessel, Hessen, Hessens, and Kessels mean to me as a Scot and me as a, an American. Okay. Now these guys, they still need their salt, don't they? Let me try. I've yet to find a good source for salt in any of my provinces that I have access to. Down here, but that's all the way down in Zurich area. Okay, where are we looking at Colburn's farm? Um, where is this? This this thing, I guess. Mm, Two hundred. No, okay, we'll get this. That's close enough that we may be able to put it into our rail system and make it profitable once um, this is um, sugar beets. Who needs sugar beets? I don't know if anybody needs sugar beets yet. That's sort of the thing. Um, oops, wool, sugar beets. Yeah, 70 or 69,000 citizens or possibly a factory, but I don't think so yet. Um, sort of looking towards the future. They need wheat, they need wheat. We got wheat here. Okay. I didn't want to do the station last time because to do it right, to go through it, we'd need a double wide station. And I don't know that we quite need that. So what we're going to do here is Put this to there, and we're going to come here. All right, we're just well, don't gamer want to go cheap? I guess gamer wants to go cheap. Oh, somebody asked about that sound a while ago. Um, we'll again wait till the thing's done if you want to remind me. Um, yeah, that's fine. If you really want to be cheap with it, splice it in the um, so that it's got going through the supply tower first. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm doing. Yeah. There we go. That's. There we go. So that all goes through the supply tower. Um, and we're going to then throw on a train from here to here. And we're going to add a locomotive, 
Yeah, fast, cheap. But what we're also going to do is, as soon as we can, put um, another railway station here. And then we're going to run through there to here as well. Um, okay, this one is to go in that way, and this one is to go that way. Yeah, we can maybe get another one of these other trains. Um, where are they? Where are they? Here. Let's copy that. Clone it. So right now we have one going in this direction, one going that direction. So keep up the rate of movement. Okay, now I think we can... What is this? Museum's train, yeah. We'll, we'll bid on this. As long as it doesn't go too high, it'll be useful when we upgrade our engines. Okay, so this is Pete, right? Um, no, it's called cattle it's peat whatever um well we can do it with just warehousing with signaling Yeah, I think that's the best option here. Um, and we're gonna come from here. Just basically that way. Now, anybody interested in Pete yet? Do these guys want Pete? Don't know if they want Pete at all. No, I want the town. Um, no, um, they wanted it at 90,000. That isn't really, really the point. The point is for the future, and which most of this is stuff for the future, but I'm going to very soon connect it up with there, and I wanted to just come through there, and so that way these other stations, when we're going to start using them, can all feed into the warehouse. I like building for the future. Then we're, after we build one here, we're going to connect these up through Cologne. So there'll be a loop coming around this way. Other, now that's obviously was sort of expensive, but this is going to be more expensive crossing a river. So I wanted to get this connected first. And now that we have enough, let's come in and see if we can do a train station with signaling. And this one, this side here. There we go. signals from here just so I can keep it every, I want to keep it all going in the same directions there we go mm. 
Now, as soon as we get money, we'll add an engine to all that. Now, Essen to Gorslosh or whatever. Um, and yes. And we might as well populate it with. And we want to set up another train from here because these guys need wheat. Yes. I'm hoping that once these guys get off to here, load it up. Okay, go. These guys will start loading. And hopefully they won't make the return trip past here until these guys have cleared the track. A little bit of an experiment here. See, we're going to run it with limited amounts of railway and keep it efficient enough to feed off of one small farm. Uh, talking of planning for the future, gamer. Yeah? Are you going to build a load of um, really big railway stations along the French border ready for the um, <laughs> Franco-Prussian War? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an idea. Um, I, if <laughs> that's funny, if um, that becomes a thing that they want to do, um, you know, a mission, I'll do that. But I don't know. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to clone that. So we'll have now one coming from each side, and also, of course, now that we have the money, we need to put in the supply tower. So. Um, yeah, we'll put it over here. Let's see if we have available. Well, I have an engineer. Now, I don't know about the Franco-Prussian War, but I know that in the build-up to World War One, the Germans on purposely built um, stations along the French and Belgian borders that were had way longer platforms and way bigger goods yards than they would ever possibly need, hmm. so that they would have the spare capacity there if they ended up at war with France. Right. I did not know that. That is interesting. And on that note, we're going to end the episode here. Um, not the stream, so don't go away unless you have to. Um, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. I do appreciate that. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And it also really helps the channel out if you go click on another one of my videos, one of the ones popping up on the right side of your screen, or the suggested videos over there that YouTube is feeding you. If you hit one of my videos, watch it for a few seconds. Um, helps with the YouTube algorithms and stuff. We live and die by that. Thanks so much. See you next time for more historical gaming.